Hello and welcome. Today we are playing an indie horror game called The Devil's Face. We're playing as Jonathan as he kind of embarks on a journey through the afterlife, but it's not a very pleasant experience. Uh, we're going to go ahead and jump right in. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Um, also, leave any suggestions for other games you think I should check out. I really appreciate it. Thanks. Jonathan, our hero, is a second-generation Christian Orthodox immigrant. He and his brother Christian were involved in a car accident. Jonathan, the driver, was able to escape from the burning vehicle, but Christian was not so lucky. Tragically, Jonathan watched as his brother burned to death. Racked with guilt over not being able to save his brother and haunted by strange visions, Jonathan decided to end his own life. However, this began his journey to the afterlife, where he will be judged for his actions and forced to live eternally in the hell he has created for himself. Your choices have led you to where you are now. It's not a good place, FYI. And the place you will see when you die is the one you have chosen for yourself. Warning, this game may cause a perfect shock, contains real images of exorcism, religious symbols, violence that may disturb some players. Additionally, the game features real locations, but we strongly discourage players from attempting to visit. Basically, warning. Warning. This game is a work of fiction and resemblance to actual events, persons, places, or situations is purely coincidental and not intended to represent reality. So big warning, flashing lights. The Book of Demons. When your soul is judged by the guardians of the two worlds, the place you will face is the one you created for your own sake. Chapter Dark Path. I'm not sure what anything meant in the first chapter. <laughs> well, where am I? This is where everything begins and ends. Who are you? I have many names, but none of them can be described. My true form and my true purpose. Where is my body? You left your body at the hospital where I took you after all. Where are you going? You don't need it. Or where you are going, you don't need it. Valid. <laughs> where are you taking me to? Where you chose for yourself to go. Where did we choose? I think we're going to purgatory. Chapter, the denial. These chapters are going quite fast. <laughs> Where am I? Oh, we have a lighter. No later equip, so we have to pick it up. Yep. Oh, we can run out of the lighter too. That's not good. I can use this key to open the door. I think I need to right click on the door. Okay. Like I said, he needs to right click. Okay. Got it. Let's unlock this door. My brother's house.
The Book of Demons. As Christ roamed the desolate wasteland, Satan attempted him with the promise of darkness. I remember my brother always listening to church music. Maybe there are other stations I can choose from. To change the station, I can right click. None of them are good stations. Maybe we just silence. Oh! Painting. Paintings of Jesus, Jesus Christ can have different meanings for different people, depending on their beliefs, backgrounds, and perspectives. Kind of hard to see. Painting of Satan versus God. Oh, there's a key. Okay. Lord. I don't know if I want to go in that room right away. This looks like we're going to need to be finding some uh, VHS tapes in classic fashion. Nothing in there. Nothing to see here, I guess. So we need to keep our eye out. Lighter fluid, that's good. I have a key. Perfect. This is impossible. The Book of Demons. The eerie echoes of chance pierce through the veil of darkness, disturbing the creatures lur lurking within its shadowy depths. Concerning. It's very dark. The Christian cross seen as a representation of the crucifixion of Jesus on a large wooden cross is a renowned symbol of Christianity. I don't want to like miss any keys hiding behind these things. Ooh, it's still quite dark. Got chairs moving on their own, okay. Hmm. More lighter fluid. Isn't this the room we were already looking at? Knowledge. The beginning of the journey. Uh, dark path. Read. The Book of Demons is in Greece, written by Anubis. Everything you need can be found in this in this game in various encrypted languages. I show you the knowledge. You grab it if you want. I am not responsible for anything if something happens to you. Good luck. Okay. Concerning. Does it have to do with the radio station? Life is like a switch, flickering and threatening to plunge us into darkness with each flicker, but we have the power to keep the lights ablaze, illuminating the path before us even in the bleakest of moments. So, we were supposed to do that. I remember my brother staying in this room for hours. I really admire his faith in God. The cross, we should fix that, probably. Oh, or not. I guess we just put it back. Put it back the way it turned. Oh my. I feel like you would just put it back normal. I wonder if we're supposed to do something in that room, though. It's weird how everything like reflects up there. Uh, 
Well, what's it? Maybe we turn the light off again? No. What does it need us to do? What? So. So we got a new note. No, oh, it's gibberish. That's all gibberish. That's not helpful. <laughs> that room stayed the same just now. Oh, there's a button. I found a secret room. Where? Oh! I wonder if we need a light. <coughs> oh, that hurt me. Okay, don't, don't do that. That secret room isn't very helpful. Okay, we got this room back. Let's go grab those other notes it's from the secret room. We already know that's gibberish. And if you get too close to that, you get hurt. So. Oh. So, oh, okay, the door opened. In the unrelenting darkness, a single flicker of light can offer faint hope, but real change can only be made through the presence of two light sources. In the depths of the tortured human soul, having even a little faith in Christ and the Virgin Mary is an absolute necessity for hope to be born. Two light sources. What is it trying to hint to me about? No thanks, we can just leave. Oh, the door is gone. Okay, well. Okay, well, are we allowed in this room? I remember my brother always had lit two candles on the candelabras as he prayed. There's no candle. Oh, we have to go find candles. Okay. Can we just pick up these? Those don't count. <laughs> We're looking for a V. Oh, there's some candles. Okay. Give me that one. Let's go put that in. Uh, candle doesn't fit. Oh. Oh, okay. That's not the right candle, I guess. Oh. Oh, it just wanted in the right one. Okay. A tape. Pop that in. See what it'll tell us. My brother's biggest fear was being possessed by unholy spirits. <laughs> We don't need that. Never mind. 
Oh gosh, okay. We need to find that other candle. The VHS is not, not good. Oh my gosh, I can't, oh, there it is. Great, let's go, we found the other candle. Candelabra has been unlocked. There must be. Oh. Okay, we're just allowed into the next room. Uh oh, the game saved. <laughs> Sometimes one must extinguish the lights and confront their deepest fears with unwavering courage. Only in the darkness are the most harrowing truths revealed, and only by facing them directly can one hope to overcome the demons that lurk within. Uh, should we be putting these out? Oh, that's great. You're doing it for us. Christ face to face, the veil of falsehood is violently torn asunder, and the stark reality of existence is laid bare before them. In that moment of divine reckoning, all illusions are shattered, and the soul is exposed in its nakedness to the unyielding light of truth. <laughs> are we gonna die? Maybe I need a key. We're looking for a key. Okay. We're back to figuring out what's going on. Uh, let's refill our lighter. I always want to check these drawers because they seem to like to throw notes in there. do in this room I don't know why the game all of a sudden like freaked out and saved there I already picked up the pictures so maybe this picture yeah my brother looks at the picture of Jesus Christ for hours every day <gasps> that was definitely it That didn't open the door, though. We still need a key for this one. Got it. Key. Is that for this room or the other room? All right, next section. All right, got our next hint. What distinguishes us from bad people? Is it our actions, beliefs, or values? It's easy to judge others, but we should also reflect on our own behavior. Uh-oh, the pictures have changed. Satanic symbol. Yep. <laughs> That was very straightforward. <laughs> mistakes are an integral part of the human experience. Throughout your life, you are bound to make several mistakes. However, the crucial aspect is to use these mistakes as opportunities to improve oneself and learn valuable lessons. Rather than dwelling on these missteps and allowing them to hold you back, it is essential to confront them head on by opening the metaphorical red door. 
By facing your mistakes and accepting them, you can release yourself from the burden of the past and move forward towards a brighter future. Through the self-reflection and acceptance, one can gain true personal growth and achieve their full potential. That was very insightful for a game like this. I wasn't expecting that. <laughs> It's all floating around us. I'm trying to run as Jonathan, but we can't really right now. I wonder what's going to be behind this door. Probably nothing good. Chapter Lost Hopes. Uh oh. We got our lighter again. Lighter fluid. And a coin. Now, what is this coin gonna be for? Let's try to preserve our lighter as much as we can. What truly sets us apart from being labeled as bad individuals is that it's merely our actions least values. The answer lies in introspection and self-reflection. While it's effortless to pass judgment on others, it is crucial to delve deeper into our own behavior. Do we perceive ourselves as flawless or infallible? It's tempting to fall into the trap of self-righteousness, convinced that our perspective is the sole truth. Yet, this mindset blinds us to our own shortcomings, hindering personal growth and development. Is this our judgment? <laughs> oh, it seems like there's other souls here too. They look like they've been laying in lava. <laughs> in the darkness of existence, where shadows lurk and despair reigns, the cross emerges as the ultimate weapon of Christian of a Christian. Its power strikes fear into the hearts of demons, shattering their malevolent grip on the soul. Through its sacred embrace, lost souls, lost spirits navigate their path towards redemption, guided by the flickering light of hope. Within its solemn presence, the cross becomes a beacon, piercing the veil of darkness and illuminating the way to salvation. I think we may be reaching our end. But what's back here? Orthodox Church. All Orthodox Christians who enter the church can, if they wish, offer coins or banknotes to financially support the church. After taking candles and lighting them, they place them in designated positions, manually using in front of the icons of the saints. Behind the act of lighting the candle, there's a deeper symbolism. One, to glorify God, who is the true and only light that enlightens every person. Two, to dispel the darkness of the night and comfort us from fear of darkness. Three, to show that we have joy in our souls. Four, in honor of the saints and martyrs of our faith, thus imi imitating the early Christians who lit candles at the tombs of the martyrs. Five, to symbolize our good deeds according to the words of the Lord. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Six, to obtain forgiveness for the sins of those who light the candle and for whom it's lit. That is why in many churches in various regions, there are separate manually where candles are lit for the living and for the dead. So are we going to be dropping a coin off? I wonder if it's around these guys somewhere. Ah, uh, here's our donation. So we can put in the coin. I remember when my brother used to come to church, he would always give some coins to the collection box. So we got the candle in. 
Let's see if that changed anything over here. Nope, I still can't walk over there. If I... If I was a worker in purgatory, where would I keep unlit candles? <laughs> Maybe there's one. Got it. We found the candle. Let's see what happens after we place it. Whenever my brother was in church, he would always light a candle and place it. Okay. So we have completed that task. I'm guessing that means the door is open. Oh, we can move. Right click. Oh, we dropped it. Oh, no. I think we may need that. Wait, I don't. <laughs> Give me my grass back. Oh, it's so bright. Okay, move it. <laughs> oh. Oh. The power of Christ fails <laughs> you. Power of Christ fails <laughs> you. And you! I'm just exercising all of these people. Be free, be gone. What have I done? My god. How did I let my brother die helplessly? Uh oh. Can we go through the door now? All right. Am I in hell? <gasps> Do you really need to ask? I, I would say most likely. Christ's message of love and unity aimed to bring people together for a better world. However, even Jesus experienced betrayal from one of his disciples, Judas, highlighting the need to be cautious about who we trust. What kind of hint is that? I believe there is more for me to do in this room, yes. I believe so too. Let's light the candle. Life, a relentless ticking clock, condemns us to count the seconds, minutes, and hours, relentlessly propelling us forward. Lost in its perpetual march, we become slaves to the ceaseless rhythm, oblivious to the present moment. We dwell within the confines of a magnifying glass, our vision distorted, fixated solely on the burdensome trials that consume us. Time slips away, slipping through our fingers like sand. While we remain indifferent, apath apath uh, apathetic to its fleeting nature, in our desperate quest to keep pace, we forsake the precious fragments of beauty scattered along our path, neglecting the ethereal treasures that exist beyond the confines of our meticulous calculations. That is a mouthful. Light the candles. All right, I got the candles lit. Oh, oh, wait, there's more. There's lighter fluid. Are we, like, trapped in this room now? Oh. We ran out of fluid. The clock is ticking away. There's this door, though. <sighs> yeah, 
out. We need to find another candle, and we're gonna be lighting these. Let's just get these lit right away. I will say the jump scares are lacking a bit, but the um the environment's pretty cool in this so far. Let's go find that candle. Got a key. Foxes? Are we moving? We're moving out of hell, you guys. We made it. I'm guessing candle will be in here somewhere. Right there. Did I just throw that up? <laughs> Page four. You are where you deserve to be. Your demons have no name. You're, you hear footsteps, but you have no body. You don't live, but you die. The darkness sees you. Consequences, death, and life. All right. We have the candle, so let's go put that in. Uh, this room? Yeah. I bestowed love only to encounter betrayal. I granted life only to encounter death. I surrendered my very being and in return I was met with excruciating agony. Cease to bestow your care upon those who are unworthy of even a sliver of your regard. I will say I do like the writing in this, actually. Jump scares aren't super great, but the writing is cool. I feel like I've been doing a lot of like escape room style games lately, and it's like escape from hell. <laughs> That's certainly a hallway. Understood. Turn around, run the other way. I don't think we're gonna make it. We can't see anything. to me. Eternal damnation is feared by many, but it may stem from our fear of the unknown. Instead of fixating on this fear, it's more productive to live a fulfilling life. Love and respect yourself and understand yourself deeply. Appreciate life's beauty and accept our mortality. True fulfillment comes from embracing the present and cherishing meaningful relationship and relationships and experiences. By knowing ourselves, we can navigate challenges with grace and face death peacefully.
The story of Cain and Abel represents the conflict between human selfishness and God's will, with Cain's jealousy and egoism leading to the tragic outcome of Abel's death. It serves as a warning to be mindful of our choices and actions and to strive for righteousness. Oh, he's thinking about his brother. In the Book of Demons, the Forest of Sins is described as a pivotal stage in the journey of the soul, serving as the gateway to the deepest realms of hell. I think we're just going to be following this path in this creepy forest now. Chapter Seven Deadly Sins. We made it back to the original room. Okay. Not again. Oh my god. Yeah, it's happening again. Sorry, buddy. We're looking for another VHS. Gonna be on this table again? No. Let's check the... No lighter equipped. Oh, we don't have a lighter. We lost our lighter? Oh no, that's gonna make this way harder. There we go. I think that door just unlocked next to us. Yep. It's definitely a nightmare. Flames engulf the surroundings, casting eerie shadows on twisted and contorted figures. The air is thick with anguish, and haunting screams echo through the infernal abyss. Each corner represents a specific, deadly sin manifested in grotesque and agonizing forms. I think we... I think there's, there's anything this game is teaching us. Must around and find out is what I'm getting from it. <laughs> Red door is never good. <gasps> Are we running again? I can't move. <laughs> what? <laughs> Not quite sure what happened there. Oh. That looks very unpleasant. Oh, that's bad. <gasps> Seven angels appear before me, but they are not white like the ignorance of the soul, and they do not have white wings. They hang from their bonds, each of them carrying a mortal sin as a reminder to the living. Uh. That sure looks, um, unsettling. Hey guys, how's it going? Looks uncomfortable up there. <laughs> Back to the red door. Arrogance. Why are you just, you're just watching him? No later again. I'm, I don't have a later again? Oh, you can see the like fingerprints on the window. So we must need to be looking through these. Envy. Laziness. Watching TV. <laughs> I call that Netflix. <laughs> Let's go. Greed. Piles of money. Oh. 
gluttony. Call that five guys. <sighs> lust. What's lust gonna be? Okay. okay. Chapter stigma. Just we're, we're just skipping over that other part. <laughs> The stigmata in Christianity refer to the physical wounds or markings that appear on individuals resembling the wounds of Jesus Christ during his crucifixion. Am I interrupting? Okay. Not sure. Everything just kind of closed on us. Why? Is that you? Hello? Okay, okay, I... I don't know. I don't have a lighter, what am I supposed to be doing? Do you need me to sit? Am I here for dinner? Well... Not that door. Not that door. I can't see. This door. <laughs> Why are you in my bathroom? I'm getting sick. Oh. What? That injured me a bit. Ugh. <laughs> we can flush. <laughs> Even in hell, you can flush. It's awesome. Are we missing something in this room, or should we be looking for something? <gasps> oh. What? Looking in the mirror did that? Oh no. People may often bring us pain, but it's important not to let that pain turn into anger. Instead, let it become a valuable lesson. In your toughest moments, you must learn to rely on your own strength. Take inspiration from the forgiveness of Christ towards those who crucified him. In a similar way, express gratitude towards those who have caused you pain as they have taught you valuable lessons along the way. Chapter Awareness We're just flying through these chapters All right, not able to oh we can open that door Well, from what I saw, it looks like a lovely kitchen. I don't know. <laughs> what weird. Skip around a lot, too. Unfortunately, we're back. What is going on? I'm guessing our purgatory is just being stuck doing the same thing over and over again. I think so. I think he's just stuck doing the same things over and over again. This is me. How is this happening? Oh, no. I think he's just realizing that he's just stuck here doing this.
Whoa. No, this can't be, can't all be true. Oh no, we're above ourselves. Oh my, it's a multiverse. It is hell multiverse. What is going on? We're above the map. Oh. <gasps> Hi, myself. Oh, he's whispering to us. You jerk! What have I done? Something you shouldn't have. Oh, that opened. Hey, it's our bedroom. <laughs> no, it's not. Never mind. Okay. Sorry. We're just like getting a glimpses of everything. <gasps> oh, uh oh, uh oh, uh oh, uh oh, go back. Or go forward? Yeah, he's just trapped here forever. Along with all these other people. <laughs> Chapter, the redemption question mark? in there <laughs> oh no I am okay Jonathan my servant after what you have done to your brother do you dare ask me for a second chance uh, we're gonna say yes I don't think it's my fault for what happened he's not gonna care do you seek to purify your soul have you truly punished yourself enough I believe that my punishment is sufficient Then you'll have the chance you want. I feel like we're being tricked. <laughs> but you want me to go through the door? Oh, where are we? Oh! I don't believe this. It's like stairway to heaven kind of situation. He's tricking us. Yep. No, he's tricking us. Yep. For sure. We're still where we always were. <laughs> Do you believe in... Oh, 
were we in a hospital bed the whole time? Oh, I wonder if we were in like a coma. Oh no. Probably from the accident? <gasps> oh no, still hell. Never mind. <laughs> Definitely still hell. We have a letter. I can't see any. I can't. I can't see a thing. Ha! Oh, it's that room again. Oh my gosh! So hard to see. Hi. Um, okay. And do not fear those who kill the body but cannot kill the soul. Rather, fear him who can destroy both soul and body in hell. Matthew 10, 28. Life is short and often unpredictable. We all make mistakes, but at the end of the day, you have to admit them in order to move forward with your life with calmness and clear conscience, the creator. I... Enjoyed it. Uh, I think it lacked on the jump scares a wee bit. Uh, I thought the writing was pretty cool though, and all the notes that we found. So let me know what you think in the comments below. Uh, if you're gonna check this game out or what you thought of the game itself, I thought it was all right. Uh, Could have used some more jump scares though. I'll see you guys next time.